Got it. <laughs> this is all for show. This is all fake. <laughs> How deep can you really get at the club? I mean, like, you can, like, dance deep in someone's <laughs> lap. Well, I just want to let you guys know there is hope and potential for something way better than that. And that's really not how God intended women to behave with each yeah. other. I have never been asked that question before by women, un unless it was my mom. Everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Kyan and I'm joined by my beautiful friend, Madison Burke. Madison Burke. That was so proper the way you said it. Madison Burke. <laughs> <laughs> and I met Maddie, how old, like a year ago? Yeah, about, about a year ago. About a year ago here in Arizona. Last April. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. Did we pass that? So has it been over? It's been over a year. Like oh. A couple months. Cool. Wow. Oh, friend of ours. <laughs> <Sorry. Yeah. laughs> Why don't you take me to dinner? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I wanted to bring Maddie on for this video because we are talking about friendships and Maddie has been through the ringer when it comes to friendships because she's had to transition out of a lot of friendships. She added a lot of friendships and I feel like now you're just like zoning in on I don't know. I just yeah. feel like you know so much about friendships yeah. and the importance of it. Yeah. So I've had a lot of questions about how to make Christian friends and uh, how to build a Christian community and how to find sisters in Christ. So yes, I wanted to make this video to answer all of that. So we're going to dive on in okay. and talk about how toxic friendships have impacted your life, mm -hmm. first and foremost, both of our lives. Yes. So, um, I would say, I mean, moving out to Arizona definitely helped me shed toxic relationships. Um, and so I know that that's not the situation for everyone. I know that not everyone, you know, has the opportunity to move away from the people that are, that are, you know, kind of creating that toxic environment in their life. And so, um, obviously... I'll give you the best advice that I have, um, but I was I did have the opportunity to move across the country, um, and that was incredible. Um, it was the best thing that ever happened to me, and in that process, um, you know, I really realized who my true friends are. You know, who checked up on me, who responded to the messages, who answered the calls, um, who still wanted to like genuinely stay connected with me, and no matter the changes I was going through supported me in that um, because, you know, I've continued to move more and more out of my comfort zone and I think that with some friends at home, that's not the case and that's okay, um, but there was a lot of judgment and resentment towards me and I, I mean, I felt it across the country. I felt it in my heart. I felt it in my mind and I just knew and, and that was really difficult. How have, like... What do you feel like having a lot of toxic people around you did? And not like toxic people, but like, I don't want to say that in a mean way towards yeah, them. No, you know? no. It's just like people who are gossiping or going out and drinking a lot. Like mm -hmm. how did it play a role in your faith and how you walked that out? Yeah. So I was not close to the Lord um, when I was surrounded by those people. I tried time and time again, I'd get to a really, really low point and I'd be like, well, the only way is God and I would pursue and then I would fall back from that because I didn't have people around me that had those, that same goal of like pursuing the Lord and his goodness and his grace. And so, um, I found that to be more of a challenge. Um, it's just like, I mean, you put yourself in a situation if you're trying to, you know, eat healthy and live a healthier lifestyle and then you're hanging out with people who drink all the time and, you know, maybe they smoke or maybe they're eating really, really bad all the time and it's so tempting and it's just like, it's really hard for you to stand your ground if mm -hmm. you don't have the support and the people around you who are also either like, hey, I support you in this, let me know how I can help you or, hey, I'm in this with you, let's do this together. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think those things are really important because with me and friendships, I feel like I don't know if I was ever in a super toxic friendship. When I was younger, I may have not realized friendships that are focused on gossip, talking badly about other people, um, 
any friendship where you try to grow and they try to hold you back from that, any jealousy in friendship, I think those can all be considered toxic in some way yeah. because they're all holding you back. Um, especially, I think something that Ryan said in the Christian dating video was if you don't know Jesus, you don't really know how to love or don't know true love. Mm -hmm. And so That's a lot true. of women in friendships, I've seen different dynamics where they're getting jealous over their friends and they don't know how to support them. And it's over this, the dumbest things and they're all talking behind each other's backs. And I just want to let you guys know there is hope and potential for something way better than that. And that's really not how God intended women to behave with each yeah. other. And I do want to say that, you know, with the in how I was influenced, well, how I allowed myself to be influenced yeah. first and foremost, like it was my fault. And I allowed myself to stay in that situation. I became one of those people. Like, I don't want to point my finger and say, these people did this to me. Yeah. And it was like, no, like. I became one of the people that I'm talking about. And so I'm speaking on behalf of like somebody it's happened to and somebody who's actually done it. I, you know, was a bad influence on a number of people. And, um, you know, I'm not saying, I'm not coming at this in a victim mentality. Yeah. I definitely like, I've learned a lot from both angles. So mm -hmm. it's definitely something that has impacted my life drastically. Yeah. Sorry, repeat that question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are some, like, signs that you should know, like, signs that you should be letting a friendship go? Okay. Um, I would say, I mean, 100%, you know, if they don't call you up about things, um, that's huge. I think it is important for us women to challenge each other to level up mm -hmm. as human beings and to become better people. Mm -hmm. Um and I think it's super important. I mean, in our group of girls, you know, we always call each other up. We never call each other out, you know, we're never like in front of people, like making someone embarrassed or calling them out and making them yeah. upset. It's always like, hey, like, I love you. I recognize this. This is just my perception. But, you know, this is something that I think could help you moving forward. Mm -hmm. And it's so healthy. So if you don't have a community that's calling you up, um, Probably a sign. That yeah, you're that's to a sign. Move on. Yeah, because something else. Because when I, you know, I didn't have women calling me up. I instead kind of had them calling me out behind closed doors and like kind of behind my back, and and that's even harder. Um, so I just think that that's really key. One last thing, a good reason it was like to let go of toxic relationships mm -hmm. is um, if they're not. I would say if they're not following Christ, um, because like Kyan said and like Ryan said, um, if you don't know Christ, you don't know true love. Mm -hmm. um, and I have found that surrounding myself with women who know Christ, at least in my inner circle, mm -hmm. um, has just like, sh I have experienced a love I've never experienced outside of my immediate family before. Um, and so that's definitely if, if you know, if these people have no desire um, and just aren't in a season where they want to follow Christ, um, I would say, you know, if, if that's a goal of yours and you want to follow Christ, then letting go and disconnecting from those people is probably a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would say, like, red flags to look out for that I commonly see is, um, like you said, calling people up instead of out is you, if your friends are constantly criticizing you and and maybe it's behind your back and you know it, that is a red flag in friendship. I think women who um, genuinely don't support you and want to see you do your best because a lot of women are insecure and I've been there where I hear, like a few years ago, I hear a friend like doing something amazing, but it almost just makes me feel bad about myself and therefore I don't truly want them to succeed because I'm insecure. Mm -hmm. So I think that's definitely something to look out for. Um, yeah, and someone who just, like, isn't choosing connection with you. Mm -hmm. um, if it's kind of like a one-sided friendship and you're always, like, reaching out to them and trying to build your friendship but they're not reciprocating that, I think that can sometimes be a red flag. Mm -hmm. However, women do go through tough seasons, and so it is kind of your choice to determine if that's something you want to stick through 
or if God's kind of trying to tell you that you need to break away from it. Um, Absolutely. As far as following Christ, I totally agree. Like the community we have with Christian women is so different than any friendships I've ever experienced. They have so much more love to give. I've never been complimented so many times. I've never <laughs> been told I love you by so many women. I've never been asked how I've been doing by so many people. I've never been listened to the way they listen to me. Um, I've never talked about God or just being better with people the way I do. So like having Christian community is so key, especially if you're just beginning to walk in your faith. It's like so, so important. And it has enhanced my love, my life so much mm -hmm. um, just within our Bible study group, but also finding Christian community with like both sexes, like having guy friends that I can talk to and I can see men following Christ. And so it starts putting these examples in my life of what I should be looking for and gives me more hope. Yeah. Um, so that's something also to keep in mind. I think that with those type of friends, it kind of brings, it brings like a different type of communication. Mm -hmm. Like there's just a lot more genuine honesty like always there so that's I feel like has been a huge thing a huge thing I've noticed with our group yeah for sure and I think one thing I will point out that's very special about our group is that we are all chasing after God but we are also very like so much chasing after being our best selves mm -hmm. too so we all love like personal development we love learning we just like love it to grow mm -hmm. together so it's not just a bunch of like stagnant relationship. We're all kind of growing and all in different areas. Like yeah. you're growing in your season of engagement, mm -hmm. like in relationship, I'm growing in being alone, mm -hmm. you know? And then like there's some people who are about to expand their families. So they're gonna be growing into a season of parenthood, but we're all growing together. So I think finding people who help you grow is really awesome as well. Absolutely. Um, so that kind of answered, I feel like, why is it important to have godly friendships? But I think you can really speak to um, just, like, the difference and it's made in your life having, like, this community, especially with, like, your past mm -hmm. and with women as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I... It has made such a difference in who I am as a woman. Um, I've always had a really big heart for people, but I haven't always shown that. Um, I was easy to anger. Um, I was easy to jealousy um, and a lot of other negative emotions that were just like, it was like the flip of a switch and I was automatically in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. um, I was very, I was very good at putting myself in the middle of situations that didn't act involve me at all <laughs> like not even a little bit yeah um and you know I, I I see those faults um but I think that it's been such a game changer because and it, it's it's really cool it's like we're all at different seasons of our life but we all have that common denominator and that's Christ and mm -hmm. through that I would take these women's advice I would take Cayenne's advice on a relationship and on a marriage <laughs> even though she's not there yet because I know that where that's coming from is such a beautiful and like knowledgeable place and that's you know within her heart which is consumed by Christ and so um, that's like been the biggest thing for me is just you know if I ever I know wholeheartedly that if I ever go through a struggle with my husband um, which I'm bound to, yeah. I mean, we're in people, perfect <laughs> humans, but you know, when I go through a struggle with my husband, I know that if necessary, I can come to these women and they will help me find a solution. You know, mm -hmm. they won't feed the fire. Um, they won't say, Oh, screw him. Like, <laughs> wow, what a jerk. Like you should just come stay at my house for the week. You yeah. know, like instead they're going to be like, Maddie, we're going to pray over you. We're going to pray over him and we're going to pray over the situation. And then let's talk about where there's been a disconnection. Um, we read this really cool book recently in mm -hmm. our group called Keep Your Love On and I am like forever attached it's to so that book. Good. It's so good. Like, if you guys haven't read it. It's marriage. Yeah. I like linked below. Oh, I like tear up thinking about it because that book changed my life. Um, and we all read it together and we were all able to bring such different and bold perspectives to the table to where it was like, 
wow, like I know that if I ever go through a struggle with family, with friends, mm -hmm. with my significant other, with myself, with God, that I can bring it here. It's a safe place. It won't go anywhere. And I can trust these women to give me genuine, grounded advice. Mm -hmm. Not advice that's like off of emotions. Like, oh my gosh, like screw that. It's like, yeah. no, like they let it sink in. And, and you're really good at this. You just like, you kind of like, sometimes you just kind of pause and then you come forward with more advice. Or sometimes you're just like, how does that make you feel? And I'll tell you right now, I, I would really like cheer up. Um, <laughs> I have never been asked that question before by women, un unless it was my mom, uh, until I met you girls. Like I never was like, asked like, how are you doing? How does that make you feel? Uh, and because like, and you just like, it's like, a, you know, it's a small question. It's like five or six words. I'm not going to count them, but <laughs> it's, somewhere, it's, it's somewhere around there. I'm not going to count them. But it's like those five or six words ch changed my life in an instant because I remember the first time it was you that asked me that. And I sat really? there and I was like. What? I thought it was weird at first. I was like, what do you mean? How does it make me feel? I don't know. I don't want to think about that right now. <laughs> like, and then you just sit there and you just look at me like, I'm going to sit here until you answer me. And I'm like, well, um, I'm really uncomfortable right now, but I guess that's good. And then I start talking about it and it's just like being able to process with women that mm. don't always have something to say. And that's what I'm working on is, um, when somebody comes to me with something, just just listening and saying, okay, how did that make you feel? Mm -hmm. You know, just, just letting letting them get it out because yeah. us as women, I feel like a lot of times we're conditioned to bottle up our emotions or to just yeah. look the other way or, you know, like, and even men, men are too, like rub oh, some dirt in it, totally. like to a maximum extent men are. And it's, so it's just like being able to like, it's just been such a game changer to be able to be like truly and wholeheartedly vulnerable with women and feel no ounce of judgment mm -hmm. and feel like every conversation has God's presence in it. And sometimes mm -hmm. if we get in, I mean, we're imperfect, right? Yeah. There's times where we will fall into talking about a situation that probably is not serving us or yeah. is serving anyone. And, you know, but what's awesome is that with all of us being able to like challenge each other to level up and mm -hmm. calling each other up and just keeping Christ as a center, we always catch ourselves and they're like, oh, like even in this conversation, I'm like, ooh, okay, this past week, you know, I, I had some conversations that probably didn't serve me or serve that mm -hmm. other person. And so yeah. it's just kind of like, whew, wow, this is beautiful to be able to realize that, know that it's, I'm, I'm human and those things are going to happen mm -hmm. and know that I have a group of girls that I can just get back to, I guess, my, my center place with and that won't look at me differently because I've fallen short mm -hmm. at times. So yeah, yeah, I think that oh, that's so cute. What you said. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. <first off. laughs> yeah. Well, going off that, something for communication with women is a lot of times we don't need people's advice. I think someone told me it's just women always know what they need to do. Typically, it's mm -hmm. just like in our nature. But sometimes we just need to be listened to where mm -hmm. men are very solution oriented. So when you talk to some people, they're like, well, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. But sometimes we just need to talk. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, having friends who listen, because I would agree with that. Like, it's hard to come by people who will just listen to you um, and, like, let you process things. Yeah, and that's something she called me up about. We were on our way to California to the Hillsong Women's Conference. And, you know, I'm in the back seat. And I work from my phone, so I was on my phone, and then they were like, her and our other friend, Katura, were like, hey, let's do like a kind of like a question and answer situation. Yeah. Like, let's ask each other questions and get to know each other better. Okay, first of all, never have I had that happen unless it's like a board game. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like it, so that was like kind of like different for me. And I'm like passively listening, but I'm still working 
and I could have put my phone down. Um, and you know, they're asking each other questions in the front, and Cayenne, I can like just feel her like looking at me through the like rearview <laughs> mirror as she's driving. And she goes, Maddie, are you listening? And I just like put my phone down, and I was like, no. <laughs> but that was her calling me up. She goes, okay, y you not listening, um, that's okay, but you know, it kind of makes me feel unimportant or what I'm saying unimportant. And that like was a super uncomfortable situation for me. And I was very quiet for a minute. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I'm so sorry. You know, like I never want to ever make you feel that way. Um, and so that's just an example of like a healthy situation where she could have just kept that quiet and she could have talked about you. Behind yeah. Your back and or... it's like, and then we had another situation that weekend where, you know, I kind of, I did a situation that brought up something with, you know, Katura and, and, and she kind of processed it for a day and then she came to me with it and she was like, Hey, this you did this and I, and I know you didn't mean it in a mean, in a mean way. I know that what you're doing is out of love. However, this is how it made me feel. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of sat there and I was like, I have so much respect for these women for coming to me with this stuff because I've never had that before. I've never had women come to me and tell me, Hey, like this upset me or this rubbed me the wrong way or I didn't like this, you yeah. know, instead it was always like behind, it was always behind my back and then there was just really bad energy in the air. Mm -hmm. And so that's like another thing is like just communication, communication and calling up. Yeah, for sure. Because I don't want to hold on to this resentment mm -hmm. that like Maddie doesn't listen to me when I'm talking yeah. or Maddie's not involved in the conversation or Maddie's always on her phone. Mm -hmm. Cause then we just get in our heads and make up all these stories yeah. about someone when instead I could just be like, Hey, this is what you're doing and this is how it makes me feel. I just want you to be aware of that. Yeah. And then from there, they get to decide what they yeah. do. And something that's amazing about Maddie is she, when she like listens to you, like when you present her with something that may have rubbed you the wrong way or you want her to improve on, she always makes that change. Mm -hmm. And she like graciously is like, oh yeah, I'm sorry, I don't want that to happen because your heart is so pure. And you're welcome. I love you too. <laughs> this is just so <laughs> nice. It's just so amazing seeing how different friendships are yeah. and I will tell you going along with what she said about like her marriage if something goes wrong like one thing I notice is when I call up a godly friend for advice versus someone who maybe is not the advice I get is very different mm -hmm. and one is like very much rooted in God and love and the other is, yeah, more of like, we have a tendency to be like, well, screw that as like an emotional response or like, screw her, like, oh, she dated your your boyfriend, like, she sucks. Yeah. But otherwise, on the other end, you have people who are like, well, let's love her anyways, because it's probably hard for her. Like, it's just like this really cool place to see everyone give advice out of love for everyone and they're not taking sides yeah. because that's not godly either. Like having a group of girls who are on your side and have your back isn't necessarily the best thing mm -hmm. because they might be preventing you from like loving harder. And growing, and growing, and becoming, yeah. you know, a better person. Yep. Okay, so now I'm just going to give you some more like practical tips on how to actually find a Christian people, yeah. how to find godly community. Um, and Maddie can also help you because she's like really good at bringing people together. Um, the first tip I will give is seek out your church and figure out mm -hmm. what events they have for young adults or just in general like women's Bible studies. Um, and if your church doesn't have it, check the next church and check the next church because having a young adult community has been so, so amazing. Mm -hmm. And when you go to these things, if there's extracurriculars outside, go to those as well. Like kickball. Yeah, like put yourself <laughs> out there. Like every Bible study we go to, they go to dinner afterwards. Yeah, I love And that. when we go to dinner, that's how I got to know people. 
when I got to talk to them. And yes, we get to talk to people in our small groups at the table, but it's so much more likely that I'll connect with people by going to dinner afterwards and spending that time with them. I go to the pool parties that they have. We just have like an awesome community and it's because, and I'll show up to these things alone. Mm -hmm. And she's really good at that. <laughs> and a lot of people will show up alone too. So just smile and talk to people. Um, it's honestly when I before I used to like research questions to keep conversations going because I was not good at talking to people so if you need to do that do it like have a list of questions to like keep a combo going yeah I find just asking someone about themselves and getting them talking about themselves is the easiest way to make a friend because at the end of the day we all love talking about ourselves yes we do and it makes you I fall to that <laughs> <laughs> it makes you feel special and important. So if you're having trouble making friends, just go up to someone and keep asking them questions about themselves. Yeah. Like if you don't talk about yourself at all, that's amazing because mm -hmm. it probably made them feel real, really good and more connected to you because they're like, wow, this person cares. Yeah. And then you were really good about like bringing people together. Like I would not know, I don't think anyone in our group unless you introduced me to them. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, it was... I was super nervous, I'll tell you that. Like, bringing, <laughs> in the past, bringing a large group of women together has caused issues at times, but that was because it, the foundation was, like, partying. Yeah. Or, you know, just going out. Or it was very surface-level relationships. Um, but when you get into, like, deep, intimate relationships and I that I had with each of these women, I was like, they're all amazing. Like, yeah. I want to just bring everybody together. Um, you know, maybe that means that you know, if, if everyone's dating someone, you guys have like a giant double date night. Maybe that means that just the girls and I go crash out. those. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and if, you know, if it's just us girls, you know, I'm like, oh, you know, let's get together and let's get dinner. just get dinner. Let's have a potluck. I love potlucks. Yeah. Mainly, you know, like, hey, let's have a potluck at my house because then I can keep all the food, you know? <laughs> no, but like, just find activities to do together, mm -hmm. but know that the environment in which you put yourselves in is going to influence the depth of your relationship. Um, so if you're like, oh, let's all get together. Oh, let's go out to the club. It's like, how deep can you really get at the club? I mean, like, you can, like, dance deep in someone's <laughs> lap, but, like, you can't, like, with your girlfriends, you can't, like, ask them a bunch of questions. Like, how are you doing? Typically at the club, if you see girls having questions, like, it's okay, he's a jerk, like, screw him, you know, like, but, like, if you go out to dinner with girls and you're like, I can look you in the eye and I don't have to scream to have a conversation yeah. with you, um, you know, and maybe it's like, oh, we all want to go see this movie, you know, and, like, there's not much talking that happens then, but then you can all reflect after, mm -hmm. or you can have a movie night at your house. Yeah. Or there's just, or you can just have a campfire night. Like mm -hmm. I, I love that. You game know, it's nights. really hot. Game nights. Oh, That's my jam. Potluck slash game nights. Like you get laughs, you get community, you get a lot of food and people typically leave the leftovers at your house. So always have it at your house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a food person. <laughs> when, see, I can talk for forever. Yes, can, girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I got you. <laughs> Like she said, you just ask a question, then you just listen. <laughs> That's what anyway. we to do. <laughs> All right, guys. So that is kind of just our general conversation about friendships. I hope that helped you in some way. And there's some good takeaways in there for you just from sharing our experiences and also like some tangible tips that you can take home. If you have any other questions about this, please leave them in the comments. We would love to have conversations with you. Follow us on Instagram, I'll link hers here. It's like right here, so you can just like, well, let's move it a little bit. Yeah, like right here. <laughs> Did the right here. Right here. Okay, and then you can follow me on Instagram as well. Um, everything will be linked below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Turn on post notifications. Okay. Alright, I'll see you in my next video guys. Bye. You did not. <laughs>